Hello guys. So in the previous video, we looked at a one off generation. So essentially uh, we looked at, you know, how we can uh, take the query and then take all of the chunks that have been retrieved and then we passed it to the LLM and then we got the answer. But actually in real world, we would ideally want the end user to be able to chat back and forth, right? So we want the system to uh, remember all the history as well. So to help us out with that, I've created a file right here called history aware generation because the rack system needs to understand the history of the conversation as well. So before we jump into the implementation, let's quickly look at uh, a bit of theory about how it is different and then we'll come back to the implementation. In basic rack, each query is treated independently. The retriever takes your exact question and searches for chunks. But in history of a rag, there is one crucial extra step, query reformulation. So before searching, the system looks at the conversation history and rewrites vague or context dependent questions into clear standalone questions. So why does this matter? It matters because of follow up questions. Humans naturally ask follow-up questions using pronouns, references, or assumptions based on previous conversations. These questions are often unsearchable on their own. Let's look at a few examples with the documents that we have. Let's say the user is saying, hey, tell me about NVIDIA's latest GPU architecture. And uh, the LLM is uh, responding with, okay, NVIDIA's latest architecture is Hopper, whatever. And now the user asks a follow-up question. What is their revenue from it? If you remember, if you look at this particular user query right here, this doesn't make a lot of sense for the vector DB, right? So here it says, okay, their revenue, what does their mean? What does it mean, right? It doesn't really make a lot of sense. So without history aware retrieval, what happens is that it searches for what is their revenue from it, from the vector database. The vector embedding searches for words like their revenue, it, it doesn't really mean anything and the result is poor or no results. Embeddings doesn't know what there or it refers to. Looking at the entire conversation, yes, it does make sense that, you know, there refers to NVIDIA and it refers to Hopper, but vector embeddings do not know it. Vector database does not know it. The retriever doesn't understand it. But with history aware retrieval, we first take the latest user's question and then we reformulate such that it makes complete sense. So right now it says, you know, what is their revenue from it? But now we reformulate it. So we make it something like this. What is NVIDIA's revenue from Hopper CPU architecture? So this entire context is maintained in this user query. So now the results are going to be pretty good. Okay, it properly finds all of the relevant chunks from the vector database. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Let's quickly jump into the implementation part. So most of this code is something that we have already implemented, just a few extra additional tweaks. So before we jump into the code, let me show you an example. And uh, it's going to be something like this where we can have like a back and forth conversation. Okay, so let's come down to the users, uh, some example questions. Uh, what was Microsoft's first hardware product release? Uh, so let me actually copy this, put it over here. And let me think about a follow-up question for this as well. And as you can see, we have the answer. Microsoft's first hardware product release was the Microsoft mouse, which was released in 1983. So uh, right now the follow-up question could be something like, you know, what does it do, right? What does it do? Okay, so now you should be able to see it actually, uh, you know, it reformulates the user's question into what does the Microsoft mouse do? It's not going to be it do anymore. It's going to be Microsoft mouse do. So now there is going to be relevant documents and then uh, sure. Okay. It does not have enough information to answer the question based on maybe the documents don't have enough information about what does the mouse do, right? Uh, Intelli mouse. Okay. It doesn't probably does not have a lot of information about that, but the idea is that the query has been reformulated so that if there is relevant information in the documents, it is going to be retrieved. Okay, so that is exactly what we are going to be seeing in history aware generation. So as you can see, the code is pretty simple. This is going to be the main method. So for now, let's close this. So if we want the query reformulation to happen, we need to keep track of all of the previous exchanges between the AI and the human. So that is why 
we have this chat history right here okay so this is where we are going to store all of our conversation as messages so coming all the way down whenever we run this file we are going to invoke the start chat we print ask me questions type quit to exit so if at all uh, you know from this particular input if at all the user types quit in that case we are just going to say goodbye and break out of this loop or else we are going to keep uh, looping through it so let us look at this ask question method so this particular first step is the only new thing that we are going to be learning the rest of it is very similar so let's look at the first step so we're just checking if the chat history is empty or not so if it is empty we don't have to do any reformulation right so that is why if it is empty in that case we are going to go inside of the else block which is setting the user question to search question that's it but if there have been some conversations that have happened in the past and in that case we are asking the ai to rewrite this user question so all that we are doing is we are providing the chat history and then we are giving it a system prompt so we are basically saying uh, here is the chat history i want you to rewrite the new uh, new question to be a standalone and searchable question just return the rewritten question that is it and then we are providing the user question as well right here so the llm is going to give us the rewritten question and then we are going to assign it to search question right here so that is it for step 1 let's look at step 2 this is going to be the step 2 we've already seen how this works uh, we are initializing the retriever and then we're invoking it so in this case we are going to provide the reformulated query right here sure we can go ahead and print it out not necessary and then finally uh, we have the same prompt the same code that we saw in the answer generation file so we are all that we are doing is we are providing the user question and then listing out all of the different chunk documents and step 4 is going to be get the answer right so the system message it's the same thing that we did here as well okay if you remember it's the same thing that we did here you're a helpful assistant that answers question based on the provided documents we're providing the chat history and then we are providing the combined input with all the chunks and the user query that is it so we get the final answer so once we get the final answer we always want to append the user question as well as the new ai message right so that we can always you know uh, continue with the next question as well so this is going to be step 5 which is to remember this conversation so uh, this code is going to be available in the repository uh, if at all you're not able to reproduce it uh, please go ahead and pull it and uh, it should work perfectly fine and that is it for this video i will see you in the next one